Welcome back everyone to another space news update from me and it's definitely a lot more SpaceX centric this week than most episodes. Not only do we have a bunch of Starship updates to cover as usual but we also have lots of Falcon and Dragon news. Crew 2's return, Crew 3's launch, the latest Starlink mission and then beyond SpaceX we have a whole host of other space news to talk about as well. So let's get right into it beginning with part 1 as usual in which I give you a weekly recap of all the activity surrounding space SpaceX's Starship. Now, last week we discussed the arrival of SpaceX's new LR11000 crane and with its assembly at the launch site, SpaceX got to work dismantling their more or less identical yellow crane, commonly known as Bucky by the community. We speculated that this crane would be moved down to the build site to assist with the construction of the wide bay and that looks to be the case now as the crane is once again assembled and being put to work on building the new bay, which will basically be a wider version of the current high bay, sans the glass bar at the top, which of course will allow SpaceX to step up their already ridiculously fast build pace of both super heavy boosters and starships. I recently discovered Snow Rocket on Twitter. They make great 3D models of the progress of the wide bay, so give them a follow if, like me, you like having your feed filled with Starship content. And you could always follow me as well, shameless plug there. Anyway, speaking of future vehicles, Ship 21 has been spotted around the build site almost completely ready for final stacking. Its nose cone is fully stacked now, and this great shot by Carlos of C Nunes Images really highlights how precise and neat the heat shield tiles are. And possibly reveals that SpaceX are just graffitiing okay on the tiles that are okay now, rather than using the classic red and green marker tape. Maybe the tape will make a comeback once full stacking begins. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts down below. Anyway, I think you already know what the biggest news of the week was. Late on in the week, Ship 20 performed the first ever six engine static fire. This involved all six of its engines, the three vacuum raptors and the three sea level raptors. And it would seem that the static fire went really well. SpaceX shared this amazing amazing photograph of the static fire and NASA Spaceflight caught probably the best video footage of it. Be sure you're following them on Twitter and YouTube for great live coverage. Over the next week or so, SpaceX will conduct the usual post-fire analysis and structural survey, as well as reattach any of the tiles that fell off. You can see several missing tiles in these shots here, but it is worth bearing in mind that about five or so tiles were already missing before the static fire, so not all of these missing tile patches are from this latest test. What happens from here now depends. If ship is in good structural condition, then this might be the final static fire we see from it. If not, then improvements or repairs may need to be made and another static fire will then take place. We'll find out more as SpaceX engineers conduct their analysis of the vehicle. I would imagine though that this test basically concludes Ship 20's test campaign. There's a few little things left, like actuating the flaps, but for the most part it's done now. The biggest hurdle going forward will be the test campaign of Booster 4. So far we've only had a three engine static fire of a super heavy as a benchmark with booster number three and booster number four has 29 engines which of course is an entirely different beast. We're so far not sure when booster four will begin its testing campaign but probably it won't be for a while. I'd be surprised if it happens in 2021 honestly but I'm always happen to be proven wrong. Right now everything still needs to be completely plumbed up and the electrics need to be rigged and connected. It'll likely be at least another month for all of this to take place. One date to mark this week will be on the 17th of November when Elon Musk will be giving us an update on the Starship program from 6 to 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So only 30 minutes and therefore a pretty short presentation. It's likely just going to be an update on the general Starship program, what the rocket itself is and what SpaceX expects it to be capable of. At best, we might get treated to some new updated SpaceX renders of Starship. The current official video is now a little bit dated. It's what's currently playing on screen for you. I don't really think we're going to learn anything new in this talk. We're certainly not going to be getting a date for the orbital launch. That's up to the FAA, who are still in the process of reviewing the comments left by the public with regard to their draft environmental assessment. SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site already has full FAA approval for Falcon Heavy, which was what SpaceX initially had planned for the site before deciding to switch it over to Starship. So even though Starship is much bigger than Falcon Heavy, I would hope that the actual impact on the environment, which is what's being discussed here, wouldn't really be significant 
fundamentally different, but I am in full armchair rocket scientist mood here, so I don't actually know. But I do have a t-shirt on that says that I am a rocket scientist, so I am definitely a credible source. By the way, if you want one of these shirts, then click in the description below the video. I'm really proud of this design. Anyway, shameless self-promotion aside, FAA and SpaceX will work together to go through the comments made and consider if any revisions or changes need to be made. There is the potential unfortunate, but also thankfully very unlikely scenario that if significant environmental concerns are raised, then an entire environmental impact statement will need to be conducted, which could potentially take years. I would say that the odds are, though, that no massive changes will be needed, and the best case scenario we're looking at is at one to six months for the whole process, with a launch likely taking place early 2022. It must be reiterated though that this evaluation is for all Starship launches going forward, not just this one, so the whole process only needs to be done this one time, unless of course Starship undergoes significant changes which I can't see being very likely. By the way, when I'm talking about Flight 420, I often use this great animation from Robosbomb, and a couple of days ago they published a fantastic Kerbal interpretation of Flight 420, so I would highly recommend checking that out, as well as the rest of the channel, there's a great 360 Raptor animation for example, best watched in VR if you own a Beat Saber machine, I mean a VR headset like myself. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much a wrap for Starship updates this week. Did I miss anything? I mean, probably, actually. So much progress happens at Boca Chica all of the time that it's pretty much impossible to catch everything, but hopefully I caught all of the important stuff. If you're enjoying the video so far, by the way, then please do consider hitting that like button to help support what I do here, and moving quickly on from that shameless request, let's discuss all the non-Starship news that we saw last week. I'm going to kick this section off with the return of SpaceX and NASA's Crew-2 mission. This originally launched back on the 23rd of April this year, and has now, after spending a cool 199 days and 17 hours in space, finally splashed back down to Earth on the 9th of November, completing the second successful crewed mission for Crew Dragon Endeavour, and welcomed back NASA astronauts Shane Kimbrough and Megan MacArthur, as well as JAXA astronaut Akihiko Hoshide and ESA astronauts Thomas Pesquet. The return of Crew-2 was actually supposed to take place after the launch of Crew-3, but due to delays relating both to poor weather conditions and a minor health problem with one of the Crew-3 astronauts, NASA decided to switch the schedule and bring back Crew-2 first. After the success of the Crew-2 recovery, Crew-3 launched successfully on the 11th of November, carrying three NASA astronauts, Commander Raja Chari, Pilot Thomas Marshburn, and Flight Engineer Kayla Barron, as well as ESA astronaut and Mission Payload Specialist Matthias Mora. The Crew Dragon successfully autonomously docked with the International Space Station not long after the launch, and the crew will now remain aboard the station until April 2022, after about 164 days on board. In addition to crewed International Space Station missions, last week also saw two uncrewed orbital rocket launches. The first was on the 9th of November, when JAXA launched an Epsilon rocket from the Uchinora launch site in southern Japan. This mission is part of JAXA's innovative satellite technology demonstration program, and the rocket itself carried nine technology demonstration satellites. These will all be to test designs and ideas that have been put forward by universities and private companies, and hopefully fruitful results will be achieved by all. For now, all satellites are now in low Earth orbit and are all reportedly in good operational status. The other launch we saw last week was another Starlink mission from SpaceX. It has been a couple of months since we last saw one of these, so it's a welcomed return on space this week. The Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched from Cape Canaveral, carrying 54 Starlink satellites to space. This flight marks the first Starlink mission to deploy satellites into Shell 4, which is an orbit 540 kilometers above the Earth at an inclination of 53.2 degrees, and will eventually consist of 1,584 satellites and will greatly improve the bandwidth of the Starlink constellation, as well as slightly boost the area of coverage for the Starlink network. As for the Falcon 9 first stage, it successfully boosted back to Earth and safely touched down on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship, about 620 kilometers downrange from the launch site. As well as being the first Starlink Shell 4 flight, this mission also marked the 100th consecutive successful Falcon 9 mission for SpaceX. It's also the 69th time a Falcon 9 has been reflown, which is pretty nice. Here's hoping the next 100 launches are just as smooth. I also hope that the three orbital launches we're expecting to see this week go well. Let's talk about what we'll be seeing SOAR now. 
The first launch of the week will be on the 16th of November and will be Rocket Lab's second dedicated mission for their client Black Sky and will involve an electron rocket carrying Black Sky satellites 10 and 11 into low Earth orbit. I've discussed this mission a few times on Space This Week now due to a couple of flight delays so I won't linger on this one for too much longer but here's hoping we finally see it soar this week. Also on the 16th, we'll see Ariane Space launch a Vega rocket from the French Guiana spaceport in South America. This will carry three Signals Intelligence satellites to low Earth orbit on behalf of CERES, a space-based electronic signals intelligence program by the French military. After this, we'll hopefully see Astra launch Rocket 3 on their fourth attempt at reaching orbit. Like with the upcoming Electron launch, I've already talked about this one quite a bit in these videos due to a few delays impeding the launch date. I imagine that Astra's launch dates are a bit more volatile than most, given the fact that these are test launches of a prototype vehicle, and also due to the fact that the launch site is in Alaska, which is a bit more prone to unfavourable weather conditions. Regardless, I am once again wishing Astra the best of luck for this flight. Anyway, that's it for Space News this week. I really hope you enjoyed the weekly summary, and if you think I missed anything, then do let me know down below, or just share your thoughts on the happenings in the industry. I know you'll be in good company. It's also now that time in the video where I give a massive thank you to all my amazing Patreon supporters whose names are scrolling on screen and of course to my channel members all of whom make it possible for me to make these videos every single Monday as well as the occasional Saturday when I get the chance to fire up Kerbal Space Program. Life has been a bit hectic for me at the moment which is why the Kerbal videos have been a bit slower but I am hoping to get things up and running with that series again very soon so make sure you stay tuned. That's it, thank you for watching, uh, goodbye.